All right, in this video, we're going to cover pressure relief valves and oil pumps. Again, everything here is in my opinion, and you can choose to listen to my opinion or not. It's completely up to you. There's no advice in this video. Because when it comes to oil pressure, uh, if you have an issue, your engine is going to go. So keep that in mind. First thing we're going to cover is the oil pressure relief valves and springs. Then we're going to talk about oil pumps because both of those things have to collate together um, and both of them will affect each other. So your oil pump size and your springs and all that stuff. So this first part of the video, we're going to talk about the springs and the pressure relief valves. Second part of the video, we're going to talk about the oil pumps and then we're going to put them all together. So be sure to listen to the whole thing. And don't forget to press the like button. One of the things a lot of guys don't know is uh, these are things that I've been progressing over the years and some things I've found out more recently is sometimes the engines were a factory rebuilt in Canada and, and I don't know if they were in Germany if they were the same way, I don't know, but sometimes the factory will bore out this pressure relief system, the, the things and put a larger piston in just slightly. So you really got to check all this stuff when you're putting your engine together. Another thing people want to know is where do I get the factory uh, pressure relief valve and springs uh, that have the same tension as the original? Um, you can get those at CB Performance. I'll put a link in the description and you can get those straight from them. They actually make one that's supposed to be exactly the same as original tension, spring tension for the uh, pressure relief side and also for the uh, the bypass so it's supposed to be the same tension as original so they do have those available at CB performance so if you got a fresh build engine it's got low pressure first thing you want to look at is the pressure relief valve in the well front of the engine back of the car I like to say that because you're facing the engine it's in the front of you and the back of the car is where it's located so anyway so you want to make sure your piston goes in freely but doesn't jiggle around uh, if it's jiggling around it might give you a little oil pressure at idle because uh, it's bypassing uh, and it should be all the way up and only going through the cooler so sometimes it's bypassing and going down and going through the other passage so you really need the proper size of these things now it they have these kits from empty these uh high pressure spring kit and it has this dual relief piston thing um or you know it's it's to i don't know exactly what it does i think it it makes it so that some oil is going through both passages so that it'll always have some oil uh, i don't know how well that works but anyway uh they have those a lot of guys will put these in uh, these uh, a lot of rebuilt engines you'll go guys like a rebuilder will take it apart and he'll see all these springs in there because people have been trying to bring the oil pressure up on an engine that's yeah you know a lot of times you'll try and get oil pressure out of an older engine and or you just start it up and it'll have like low oil pressure right at right when you first start it and it takes a while for it to build up pressure so they'll put these springs in to try and cure that I mean, it does work sometimes but not all the time uh, if you do have that issue, you could try putting the high pressure spring only in the back of your engine. Um, and, and so we're going to go over the flow of that and what that might do. You know, if you're going to try that, that might work. But you uh, you need to also check the piston to make sure it fits properly because a lot of those either fit too loose or too tight. I've seen both actually. So if you're on a micrometer on a lot of these pistons, I mean, even original ones, you'll find a lot of different sizes. So anyway, and that's because sometimes when you get those rebuilt ones, um, they're bored out a little bit. So keep that in mind when you're taking apart an engine. You know, if it's a Canadian rebuilt, you never know. It might have a larger piston. So try and keep that piston with that engine. So keep that in mind again. So you really need to go through oil flow this is what i do i go through the oil flow of the engine and this is how i've come up with a lot of this stuff is the oil comes in through the pump goes up through this gallery here or 
we'll call them passages because I don't know gallery kind of means a lot of things so um, and you go up through this passage here it goes across and goes down it goes down to here and then it pushes that piston down okay as the oil pressure gets up it'll go through the cooler first and then as it uh, pressure gets up too much too much pressure going through the cooler then what it'll do it'll actually bypass to this passage here that goes across this rail it actually goes from here all the way through and you'll see a plug on the other end of the case um, it loads up that whole area and it basically does the same thing so the cooler one goes up through the cooler and then comes back into this passage here goes up through the cooler comes back in the middle of this passage so eventually they both end up here so that high pressure kit is designed actually to put more oil through the cooler so a lot of people think that you won't get as much oil through the cooler you'll actually get more with this heavy duty spring it'll actually make it harder for that oil to push down this piston and it won't get well, as much will go through here so the whole concept of these is to try and get more oil to go through the cooler especially when it's cold you know when you first start it you want it to go through the cooler first so that it doesn't try and go through both passages and then bring your oil pressure up slowly too too slow so sometimes that piston will be stuck in here stuck down and it'll be trying to go through both of them so that's what you want to check is to make sure that piston is going all the way back up in there and it's again if it's tight enough and it's not bypassing right there this is what they call the cooler bypass valve i think and this one back here sets the pressure on a dual relief case one of the things you want to take note of if you have a 40 horse or a single relief 1500 or whatever 1600 the single relief case if you notice here how small this plug is right here compared to this one where is it this one on the top right here let's get you guys back so you can see this one on the top that is your oil feed that goes from here up it goes up this passage over across here to your cooler and they're a lot smaller on the single relief case so if you have one of these springs in a single relief case you're pretty much starving your engine for oil because it's not going to get enough oil through that small tiny passage to actually oil some of your main bearings and, and, and rod bearings so you you know that having one of these spring kits in a single relief in my opinion is a no-no nope don't do it so those can be used and possibly in a dual relief case Honestly, I would recommend all original stuff. That's really the best way to go. But, you know, it can be done. I've done it before, needed to do it, and it's helped me with a couple of things I've had issues with where it brings up oil pressure too slow. Uh, engine that, I don't know, for some reason has an oil pressure issue. Now, when you get into larger oil pumps, those springs can be really a, a, a negative effect. So we'll get into that again later. So you really need to understand it doesn't just, it's not just one thing, you know, like a cookie cutter where it's just all the same. There's a lot of variants in there. So we're going to kind of talk about those a little bit later. Now that spring kit will come with two of these. So there's two of those silver springs. If you pull this out and you've got a bright silver spring back here on a brand new engine, probably not a good idea. And sometimes the original springs might be sacked out. So the, having those new ones from CB Performance is kind of nice because then you know you've got good brand new stuff and the springs aren't worn out. Probably a good idea, you know, if you're going to do a rebuild to get a set because then you at least know that the oil pressure is going to be back to whatever it was originally. And I don't know, again, it's, I don't know where it's made, but hopefully that spring tension is as good as the original or better or whatever. You don't want it to be too much. You don't want it to be too little. Because on the dual relief, this is what sets your oil pressure. So there's two things you have to deal with with oil. There's oil volume and oil pressure. Two different things. 
and both can affect each other. If you don't have enough oil volume, you may not have enough oil pressure. If you do have too much oil volume, you might over pressurize your engine. Uh, but it all depends on engine wear, you know, on the parts you're using, how many RPMs you're running. Typically, a good rule of thumb with any engine is 10 pounds of oil pressure per 1,000 RPMs of rev. Okay, so if you're going for 6,000 RPMs, then you ought to have at least 60 pounds of oil pressure at that RPM or it's going to starve the engine for oil. Guys doing 10,000, that's why they start having those scavenging pumps and all that stuff. They're getting 100 pounds of oil pressure. Pretty necessary when you're going to 10,000 RPMs. Not many guys doing that, but I'm just saying, as a rule of thumb, 10, 000, 10 pounds of oil pressure for every 1,000 RPMs. So I kind of like the old saying, keep it stock, don't run a lot of RPMs, and you're probably going to be fine. So if you do that, and you run the original springs, probably going to be okay. Now let's talk about when you might have problems and you could have this even with stock springs or with um, especially when you have these if you have these in there and you're running a larger oil pump now the dual relief engines came with 26s okay and the single relief came with a 20 I don't know some of them came even I think a smaller one like a 19 a little bitty skinny thing uh, let's see if I have it something I think this pump here is a 21. I didn't measure it, but see how thin that is compared to that one. You can kind of look at it from the outside. A lot of times you can see if you've got a smaller pump on your engine. These 21s, uh, as soon as you have any engine wear, it's like barely enough oil volume to give you any oil pressure. So... You know, it, once they start to, once you start to get engine wear and you have one of these, it's like, man, you know, it starts to get sketchy. So I don't run these anymore personally. Uh, I won't run these on a, on a, on a single or dual relief or anything, um, or 40 horse even. I'll, I'll usually put on the 26 on everything. So a lot of guys, as a rule of thumb, and, and it's not wrong. I'm not saying anything's wrong. Uh, they'll go to a 30 millimeter pump on a full flow because you're gonna have an oil filter and a cooler outside of the engine okay so you're gonna have all that oil going through those lines to ensure that you have enough volume of oil to go through all those lines uh, to achieve pressure they go ahead and put a 30 millimeter pump on myself I've not had any issues running 26s you guys can comment below what you guys think on this. There's no right or wrong answer in my opinion because I've had 26s with a full flow and not had a problem. In fact, when I had a 26 on with a full flow on my other engines and it's the first time cranking it over to fill up the pump, fill up everything. When I do that with a brand new engine, in fact, if you have a, a car that you haven't driven in a while, it's not a bad practice to pull the coil wire off and crank it over until the oil light turns out. Um, I usually will crank it over when I have a brand new engine and I will pull the coil wire off and I will run it, crank it over until one of two things, until the oil light turns out or if I have a pressure gauge, I get up to a decent amount of pressure cranking. So I'll do one of those two things before I try and fire the engine to get everything primed. Now, I found that with the 26, even with those long lines I have on my bus, I've got lines all the way from here, all the way, way up. I mean, my oil cooler has got to be at least, what is that, about four feet from the engine. It's way up in the front, and so is my filter. And my cranked up and filled up all those lines and the filter and the cooler in a matter of seconds just cranking it over so a 26 can put out a lot of oil volume um and i got you know pressure light went you know went out within just a few seconds so they can put out a lot of oil volume and i think a lot of people underrate them they think that oh you don't have to 
you have to go to the 30. But, you know, I found that that 26 can do a lot. And I have a lot of other guys that I know that run the 26s that say the same thing. So I'm okay with it. You know, some guys are going to say, no, I run a 30. And that's okay. You can do that too. And that's just up to you. This is all your opinion, whatever you want to do. Now, what I'm going to talk about is a couple things of having too much oil volume can create too much oil pressure. And too much oil pressure can be a problem. Okay. Too much oil pressure. So we have seen uh, pumps, a stock real Shadak pump, shear off that little thing that goes in the cam from too much pressure. And typically this is from a 30 millimeter pump. So when you get a 30 millimeter, I'm not saying don't do it. You just want to make sure that you got everything right. Okay. Because if you're running a 30, you got a brand new engine and you've got those silver springs in there. And this one's one of those silver springs. That might be a problem guys, because that's going to be too much pressure. That spring that they have the 30 for the, uh, the silver one for the back is just really stiff and what this does on this dual relief case is it actually relieves the pressure to the uh when it's too much too much pressure and the other thing is is if you've got a 30 millimeter pump on a brand new single relief again it might be an issue you might have too much pressure and because you have no second relief system so it's kind of doing the same thing as a really stiff spring over there so having a 30 on those it's kind of like well you know i don't know personally i don't think i would try it running a 30 on a 40 horse but you know on a 40 horse case um, i think a 26 usually will give you enough volume uh, even to run a cooler and a spin on well i guess will disagree with this but I don't have a problem doing that myself. Again, one of the things I don't run is those 21s on anything, even on a, uh, a 40 horse or whatever. I just don't run them. I'll go to the 26, pull this plug out right here, okay? Then what I'll do is uh, bore this out. I'll take a drill, drill this out larger because it's too small, okay? And then on the other side of the case, the in, inlet side is too small uh, for the 26. I'll drill that out and get more all oil volume going through here so that it can achieve oil pressure and not over pressurize. So if you're gonna run a if you're gonna run a 30 on a a 40 horse, probably won't want to look into doing something like that. You know, uh, opening that guy up there and getting more oil volume to there because it's going to build up a lot of pressure with that much oil volume i mean you literally can have a lot of oil pressure right here another thing that i like to do if i'm running a barbed um this is an an fitting okay uh if i'm running a barbed uh slip on fitting on here an oil hose i like to run two clamps on each one especially when you're running a 30 millimeter pump i would really suggest going to an fittings um, because they'll handle a lot more pressure than the even two clamps will but i'll always run two clamps if i'm doing it the other way i'll put two hose clamps on each one of these hoses because i've also seen high pressure those blow off the other thing that can happen from too much oil pressure again if you have that spring okay or even if you've got that, let's say you've got that silver spring in here on this one, and you've got a 30 millimeter pump, you're going to have a ton of pressure going into your cooler. You can blow your cooler seals. You can actually blow the cooler in half. That's happened before with those big pumps. Uh, it, it could even possibly happen with a 26. I, I don't know. But I'm just saying... You know, I, I don't think it probably wouldn't actually, but if you had maybe this one plugged up, or maybe, and you had a brand new engine, it was on the stand running, you know, brand new, fresh, there's, you know, those tolerances between those bearings are so tight when that engine's brand new. 
That's why I tell people, you know, don't put anything other than oil in your oil pump. I've seen guys put grease, Vaseline, all kinds of stuff like that in there because brand new, when that thing's brand new and it has something other than oil in there, that has to be pushed through that bearing surface. And that bearing surface is a tolerance that's made for oil and you're trying to put something else through there, it may not lubricate properly. It's probably better just to stick with oil. That's why you crank it over before you start it, before it runs, before you, when you have a brand new engine, you crank it over with the coil wire off to get the oil to fill up all the, all the areas of the engine so that there's actually oil between those two surfaces. If you have a bearing with no oil between the two surfaces, it's going to be a problem. You never want the bearing to ever touch the crankshaft. There should be oil between there all the time. So having these silver springs in, I think is really something that's for engine, a worn engine, not really for something new and not a good idea really. On this engine I could run, because I've got an oil cooler block off if you noticed. Got an oil cooler block off and I'm doing that to run the original tin. Uh, and, and I want to have more air going to number three. So that's the only way I can do it is run all the, all the, uh, cooling is going to be external. Okay. I'm not going to have the fan doing any of it. I'm going to have a, it's cooler is going to have its own fan. It's going to be off to the side. Okay. So that's why I've got that on there. Uh, this engine, I could run this thing here and with that gasket and everything on there probably wouldn't fail. Even if I had a 30 millimeter pump, probably with this, it'd probably be okay. I'm just trying to give you food for thought, you know, things that, you, you know, you do what you want to do. But uh, it's better really just to run the original one because it doesn't matter. Because once that engine builds up enough oil pressure, this thing's going to go down. It's going to go through both of them. That's actually better flow to go through both of those at the same time. It's just when you first start it. It, you know that limited amount of at idle or at idle yeah you, you don't have enough rpms for it to build up a lot of oil pressure so it's better if it just goes just through the cooler instead of trying to run through both of those passages because it'll give you a little bit more pressure at idle so anyway just to think about there but as you go down the road you get your rpms up then you've got a lot more rpms a lot more oil volume going through in there and then it starts to push that pressure relief piston down and that's when this thing might not be good for you. So anyway, you know, these things are not really a fan. All right. So AN fittings, this thing, these lines are rated at a thousand pounds. I don't think we're having a problem there. So these are available on Amazon, not expensive. This is actually, it looks like it's nylon braided, but it's actually steel braided and nylon. So it just doesn't have the steel on the outside. It's got steel underneath that. So they look cool like that. Nice black looking lines. And they actually have them on Amazon. I'll put links in the description. Not expensive. And it will eliminate if you got, you know, it, I don't know. I mean, it's all made in China. I mean, is this going to hold up? I, I don't know. Probably. But, you know, hey, what are you going to say? And where's your other hose made? You know, I don't know. If you got it from MP, we know where that's made. That's why when I ordered this, I didn't order the whole kit. I didn't need the thermostatic part of it in fact you could use a coolant thermostat you know just so you know you could probably do that but definitely use a relay <laughs> i would not use that without a relay see i'm using a relay mine's just going to be on all the time as soon as i turn the engine on that's going to be on because i don't have another cooler so again these are just ideas that i have you know i want to have that fan's going to be on all the time i don't need it on a thermostatic thing because you know, on the stock engine, fans running through the cooler all the time, right? So that's what I'm going to be doing with that. So there's two couple main points in this video. Number one, make sure the piston's the right size. Uh, make sure that the springs are original. I like to get those original ones. Or the CP Performance has them. Check that link. If you're running a 30... Beware that you could overpressurize your engine because it's got a lot of volume and it can build pressure very fast. Um, and definitely don't have one of those silver springs back here 
is you're probably going to have an issue. If you're running the single barbed clamps, run two clamps, really good idea. But better just to get the AN fittings and hose. It's a lot easier to take your engine out. You just take those off, pull the engine out. It's less hassle, believe me. Way better to go that way. If you have little or no oil pressure at idle or when your engine is running, sometimes these slip on the gear. And even with a Shattuck pump, they slip on the gear. So that might be an issue for you. Check that out. And that's no new thing. This was back in the 80s we were having that problem every once in a while. While you got it off, pull this thing out and check and see if that's been busted off. Had that happen before. Again, a lot of these problems are with 30 millimeter pump. I'm not saying don't run them. There, a lot of guys swear by it. They run it and it works great and it's great for them. Um, and let me know what you guys think. If you like running a 26 and you've got a full flow system and it works fine, let us know in the comments. Uh, and, and you haven't had any issues. You got, you know, 50,000 miles, 100,000 miles on your engine and you're running full flow. Because as the engine wears, you know, your oil volume might need to be more. And I'm wondering if, you know, I don't have anything that I've got 50,000 or 100,000 miles on that I remember, okay, I probably do, but I don't remember, that had a 26 and a full flow system. Uh, you know, maybe at that point it's going to starve it for oil and start causing engine wear, you know. Another thing to think about real quick, I forgot to mention. Problems again with running a 30 that you need to really check out. Because again, these are, I mean, it never made a 30 millimeter pump. They, it was always, this is aftermarket stuff. So make sure that on the inside, on this pump, it's either on a flat cam or dish cam. I can't remember, but make sure that this is not going to rub. In fact, you check this every time. They're going to rub on your cam uh, rivets or your cam. Uh, it can be just rubbing a little bit. And if it rubs a little bit and it'll cause that, that uh, bolt or the end of that rivet to wear off. And uh, yeah, it'll actually bust that thing off. I've seen that before. Okay, on the inside, especially on a 30 millimeter pump. On 26s, I check it too. Especially on 26 on a 40 horse, remember, you got a different engineered engine. It was designed for a smaller pump. So, on here, and then when you have a 30, it's going to be closer to here. And if you notice, even with the 26, when I'm running this setup, okay, I've had to grind a little bit of this edge off of this cover just to get this tin to fit. On a 30, you're probably going to have to open it up a little bit, make a little hole in it. Okay. And this is the reason I tap this thing in pretty far and try and get it in there really far on the full flow. And so that I can get this tin on. Okay. Because a lot of times you'll have to cut a hole in here. So I wanted to avoid doing that. So I tapped it in nice and far and then do it that way. Well, that's just why I do it. Now, um, when you run your 30 again, you're going to have, it's going to stick out, you know, it's five millimeters, uh, 26, 24 millimeters more, right? So you got four extra millimeters. You got two millimeters here. Maybe they got a millimeter on the back side. I don't know, two, three millimeters here. So it's going to be out a little further and it could possibly, you know, when you have this sort of cover on it, it might have issues with rubbing. Okay. A 30 with a flat cover with no... When you're running with just a 30, you're not using full flow. It, it, I find it pretty unnecessary, but um, uh, you're trying to. The whole rule of thumb is if you're going to run a full flow, run a 30. If you're running a stock, you run a, a 26. But again, I've had no issues running 26s with full flow. It does prime really quickly. And again, it must, it does matter on how many RPMs you're running and stuff like that. If it's a street racer engine dual carbs and you're going to be putting up over 6,000 rpms in the lot you know maybe you want to do the 30 just to get the oil volume up higher to actually get the pressure up high so that you know you're gonna you're gonna meet that 10 pounds per 100 
for a thousand RPMs. Anyway, I think I've covered most of it. You know, that's the rest. You know, it's just there's just a few things like that to think about if you're doing any kind of mods. Uh, that you know, you won't want to just think about those things and look into them and figure out what you think the right thing is to do. I can't give you any advice, really. Just uh, that's how I do it. But you know, I'd like to see your comments below on how you do it and uh, what you like to do, and, and uh, it might help other people. You know, encourage you guys to read the comments below uh, and, and somebody might explain that I'm wrong and maybe they're brighter than I am then that's fine okay so anyway I'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe and see your comments below